Ooh, are you ready? This is an exciting one. Tips, tricks, shortcuts. Now that you've got a few Webflow skills under your belt, I'm gonna share with you some of the things to make your day go a lot faster, make you look impressive in front of your colleagues as well. Hang around to the end, I've got a special Webflow Easter egg hidden there at the end. All right, probably the most commonly used, or at least for me, is on a Mac, it's Command Shift P. Okay, on a PC, it's Control Shift P. Hit that, and it just toggles between. You can just keep hitting those buttons, and it toggles preview mode on and off instead of trying to click the small eyeball up here. Okay, so that is Command Shift P on a Mac, Control Shift P on a PC. It gets better. Go into preview mode, and you can, on your keyboard, okay, look at your keyboard. The numbers that are above the letters, hit one, two, three, four, five. Cool, eh? You can kind of just jump between all the different views. One, two, three, four, five. Five is not the one you want. <laughs> it just opens that. Just do one, two, three, four even. Okay, you can do it in both the preview mode and in uh, the designer. Okay, one, two, three, four. And remember, Command Shift P or Control Shift P on a PC, you can look at preview mode. Woohoo! Next super awesome one is be back in your designer at a preview. Okay, and on your keyboard, you've got A, S, D, and Z. They're all kind of grouped together on an English keyboard. They're all real handy. Those are the ones that I use the most. If you're, you know, if you're using interactions lots, can you see if you hover above it? It's H. I never remember the shortcut for interactions because I'm not there all the time. The ones that am there all the time are A, S, D, Z. Okay, A is add. That makes sense. A for add. Okay, I'm always going to the add and then back to the navigator, which is Z. A, Z, A, Z. The other ones, S for styles. Watch this, if you're over here and you're on something else, hit S for styles, that makes sense. A for add, S for styles, and what would be the settings? D, <laughs> which makes no sense. It makes sense because it's next to the other useful ones on your keyboard, but there you go. <laughs> A, S loads, D, I use loads, and Z, okay, for the navigator. Remember, there are lots of other ones, you just gotta hover above them, and if you're using the style manager loads, you're probably the only one, but it's G, there you go. All right, A, S, D, Z. The next one is super awesome. It's the find everything shortcut. Okay, so I'm, you know, I am here and I want to add something. Instead of going to my A and then scrolling and figuring out as a component, maybe it's under layouts. Okay, what you can do is cut to the chase and just click where you want it to go and hit Command E. On your keyboard, can you see this find anything appears? You just need to know what to type. And if I want another image, I just start typing image and there you go. It adds an image, ready to go. So I want another heading, I don't know, underneath this paragraph text. So Command E, and I just go heading. There you go, hit enter. I just typed in the first few letters, and I hit enter, and there you go, go to heading. So if you can remember vaguely what it's called, Command E, oh, that's Command E on a Mac. You're Control E on a PC. Sorry, PC guys, I've forgotten about you. Okay, so Command E on a PC, and then type footer. Look at that, there's a footer, giant footer. I can't add a footer. <laughs> <laughs> inside of this. Anyway, you get the idea. Command K works as well. Does Control K work on a PC as well? If some of these shortcuts aren't working or have changed, you can go down to see this little question mark down here and go help, okay, and keyboard shortcuts, and it will list out them all. I'm giving you the good ones. Can you see on a Mac it's Command E and Command K? Back in the day it was only Command K, but Command K on a Mac opens up I can't remember, is it mission control? Something else. So they changed it, but they left the old one, which is confusing. Anyway, so that's control or command E, find anything. Now that gets better. How better do you say? When you can add a class automatically. Well, simply. Watch this, let's say that I've got this style here, and when I add a class, and we've been going up here, and we've been going to this, and oh, we can pick from existing ones, or we can type them in to add them. But watch this, imagine if I could just use my keyboard. Click on this, and I hit Command or Control Return on my keyboard. Key set jumped up over here, here I am, and I can type in heading, because I've named mine relatively well. There we go. Let's go to this, Command Return or Control Return, and I'm just gonna type, uh, paragraph, have I got any more? I've got text, there you go. And I'm using my arrows to go down, there's my text block red, there we go. Where it gets cool is, first of all, I'm gonna undo mine, uh, Command or Control Z, get back, is let me show you a bit more of a flow combining a couple of them. So underneath this paragraph I need, a, let's say, another heading. So I'm gonna go Command E for, oh, reload site. Oh, what shortcut did I hit? I'm not sure. <laughs> Start again. So here, we're gonna go Command E, I'm gonna type in heading, Hit return, command return to add the class, and I'm gonna go heading down, 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 one. Look at that. So you can add stuff and style it without kind of going through all the menus. You add command or control E along with command or control return. 
this one here, button, I'm gonna go command return. What else have I got? Have I got any more button styles? I only, I've only got one, okay, button uh, nav. You can add them. Let's say I just wanna add one. I wanna add a, a class, I wanna add a new class here. So I'm just gonna call it button and I'm gonna call this one purple. Hit return, it's created a class instead of selecting one. It's the same shortcut, command or control return. And then I can go down here and say, actually the background of this one is going to be now purple. There we go. All right, next one is pretty cool. It is the this one here, it's called X-ray mode. That's the shortcut. It is command shift X or PC, it'll be control shift X. What does it do? It makes everything black and white, which isn't that useful. What is useful though, is when I am in this mode, watch when I hover over, can you see? I'm not doing anything, I'm just hovering, okay? And it's showing me all of the padding and where it's coming from, can you see that? Okay, it's showing me that, why is this over here? It's cause there's padding, which is green. What's pushing this down a bit? It's cause there is blue, which is uh, margin. Same with this, if I click, oh, I'm not even clicking, just hovering on this section here, it's got padding on it. That's what's pushing all this text on. It's not margin from the title, it is padding from the section hero. So it's just a really handy way to kind of move around and go, what is making this do this? All right, that's Command Shift X or Control Shift X. Turn it on and off and just kind of work your way around to see what's being affected. Great if you're working on somebody else's project and you can't, or yours from a long time ago, and you can't remember what's actually making things do what it's meant to be doing. The next one is over here in my styles, which is S for styles. Okay, I'm in the styles panel and if you hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC and click any of these little arrows or chevrons, they all close down on it. It's just nice and tidy way of working, just kind of going in and out rather than having them all open, which is that same key, alter option, okay, and scrolling through them and trying to figure out where they are. The other nice thing about this option is you can start to see, if I've got this selected, it's showing me that this image, this class at least that I've got selected here, is doing stuff on layout and spacing, but nothing else. There's no other blue dots. That means something is actually doing something on this class. And in this case, it's the display set to block, okay? And the sizing has got some margin on it, okay? These ones here, this class does nothing with position. Absolutely nothing, no dots. The amber ones here, that is saying that there's actually a max width coming from somewhere else, and that's why it's amber. How do I figure out what is making this 100%? You hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and just click on it. Actually don't, <laughs> the command key, okay, or the control key on a PC. And it says the value's coming from all images tag. We'll look at that tag later on. Okay, but there are times where, let's have a look at this text. Okay, typography. There's nothing getting done here. A lot of, lot of uh, you know, amber stuff. Let's hover, hover over the, let's have a look at the color. Where's the color coming from? Hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on a PC. It says, hey, it's coming from the section called hero. So that's where it's getting its color from. So I could click on the section here and say, yeah, there it is. It's blue, it's white. It's affecting everything that's inside of it. All right, the next one are picking units. So let's say this heading here, we wanna go, actually, yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's do the typography, and let's say we don't want it to be pixels, we're gonna use Eames, okay? You don't actually have to drop this down and say I want Eames or Rims, okay? I can just, actually, let's undo that. Undo, okay, I'm gonna just type in, I want it to be 2REM and hit enter. Can you see it just updated that and adjusted it? Any of these fields, you can type in measurements, Let's say I want the spacing to be a margin of 50, but I want it to be percents. Instead of changing it from pixels, I can just type in percent and it will make it 50%. All right, undo, undo. Things are getting wonky. There we go, let's get rid of him. Next one. All right, this next one is more useful when you've got more complex sites. Uh, we'll do uh, one of those later on, but to put it all in this video here, let's click on this image here. And if I use my left and right arrow, can you see it kind of moves through everything that is what's considered a sibling. Okay, everything that's in this section called hero, all of these guys, they're all buddies, they're all siblings. Okay, they're all on the same level. Okay, so you can click on here and use your left and right just to kind of select the different ones. It can be trickier to select these things when there's a lot of data on the page and maybe it's not very big. So left and right is siblings up and down. So I'm gonna use my up arrow to go and select the parent. Okay, in this case, it is the section hero. There we go. So that is the, you know, that's the section there. Sometimes you can't even click on the section underneath. So you click on the, you know, the child and you just hit the up arrow and that'll select everything that's outside of it. it. Can be really handy when there's no room, you know, maybe these buttons are covering the background and we can't select it. So we can just say, you, up arrow, select the parent, 
that works down here. Okay, because remember there's div tags here. We can use the navigator, of course, but we can just click on this image, hit the up arrow, and we've select the parent div. Uh, downwards, start selecting the children. So I can say, yeah, section past events. I can go down arrow, down arrow, and go deeper inside of it, which I never do. But the up arrow is really good, selecting the parent. Keep going, eventually you get the body all the way at the top. The grandparent, nobody calls it that, by the way. All right, next one. Next one is I'm gonna click on this paragraph text here. I wanna change the size. If I click in here, I can usually use my up arrow. Can you see it moves through 16, 17, 18, 19, down, up and down with just the arrow keys in any of these little fields. You can tab to the next one, watch this. Tab, ooh, I'm in the height. Okay, so you can mess around with these. Shift tab goes back. Too hardcore? I use it all the time, <laughs> but I'm a nerd. Uh, you can hold shift and use the up arrow. Can you see it goes in lots in 10? Okay, and that's true of basically any of these options. So let's say I want the spacing over on the margin here to be, uh, it's starting off at one. I can click in here and use my up arrow to go individual, hold shift to go over in big chunks. Can you see it moving on the page there? All right, how do you reset it? You can hit the reset button on most of these or hold down the option or alt key and click them and it will just kind of reset it to whatever the default is. Remember the zero, remember the default sometimes isn't. In this case here, if I reset it to the, you know, if I put it to zero to go back to the default, that's, you know, not the default. The default is actually probably 16. Let's hold down the option, give it a click and it will actually, 14 is what the kind of default for that is. So remember option or alt clicking is better to kind of reset it, get it out of there, don't make a, go back to what it was by default. <laughs> you get the idea. Don't be afraid to alt drag things. So hold down the alt key on a PC, uh, option on a Mac, and watch this. I can drag another one of these, and look, I've got two of them. Need another heading over here? Hold down the alt or option key, and just drag it, and it will duplicate it while you are dragging. The other useful thing is that you can right click things in Webflow. I can right click this, get into different things, copy. Duplicate, I can add a class to it. I can rename the class that is around here. I can add a trigger. Look at this right here, rather than going to this option over here. I could turn it into a symbol. I can move it up and down to the parent. I'm just reading these out now. And um, it's kind of weird because in a web-based application like this, you assume right click's gonna do all sorts of like googly stuff, not the actual application. But somehow Webflow have taken control of the mouse and sometimes it doesn't work over here. Can you see this is the normal stuff you see in Chrome, but over here, look at that. You get Webflow stuff. Another thing you can do is with uh, some of these fields, okay, especially these kind of like singular fields that have little inputs, you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC, and actually just drag them. Can you see the little arrow changed? If I hold down my option on a Mac, alt on a PC, and just drag these things up and down again, just to visually get them where you want. Some of them, like this margin here, you don't actually have to hold anything down, okay, you just drag them. You'll get used to which ones do which, these kind of like infographic style ones you can just drag, but any of these fields that you gotta type into, you can hold down the option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC just to click and drag, nice. Speaking of dragging over here, we've looked at it before, but if you hold down the option key up here and drag, you'll notice that even just by clicking the key down, can you see this bit highlights? Okay, so it's showing you that I'm gonna do both sides. Look, ooh, they're the same, they're both 98. If you hold down the shift key, or the command key, shift key. <laughs> <laughs> and drag them, they'll do the top, bottom, and left. Okay, great for things like uh, the sections, okay, where you want them all to have some margin, or in this case, some padding, all to be the same. Hold down your shift key and drag one of them, they all come along with the right. And the alt option is either side, either top or bottom. Making a mess of this one. Also, while we're here, remember you can pin the navigator if your screen is big enough. It's this option here, it means it just doesn't go away. Okay, otherwise the navigator is super helpful and you gotta open it every time. Stay there, please, thank you. And last but not least, the most exciting of them all, it's the Easter egg inside of Webflow. Being the designer, don't do anything else. Actually, let's let's say I've got this, and I'm like, you know what? <sighs> there needs to be something better than impact. You know what's better than impact? It's this, you ready? Type in IDDQD and then go back in and happy days, look, Comic Sans has appeared. <laughs> I hate you, Comic Sans, <laughs> but it's there. Hate's a strong word, sorry, Comic Sans, and Comic Sans lovers. What was that shortcut again? It's IDDQD. You get extra points if you know what that is. Anybody remember what that was from? Let me know in the comments if you do. That a nostalgia for those of a certain vintage. All right, those are all the shortcuts that I love and use. You might have your own. If you've got one that you wanna share, throw it in the comments. And if you're wondering, I can't figure out a way of turning it off either. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're welcome. Once it's on for a project, I can't seem to turn it off. Sorry about that. But there we go. On to the next video. That, my friend, is the end of the video. Uh, but not the end of the course, uh, the video you just watched. Um, it is a small part of my larger course called Webflow Essentials. So if you enjoyed the video, my teaching style, there'll be a card up here you can click or a link in the description, okay? And come join me for the full course. Uh, like the video as well if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel for more stuff, but hopefully see you in the course. Bye.